In this video, I'm going to show you how I create style frames using Adobe Illustrator and why they are so important to the motion design process. Here are the finished style frames for this scene, and I'm going to take you through the full process. First, what is a style frame? A style frame is an image that represents what the final animation will look like a snapshot to help the client and other animators get a sense of what exactly will be made. But in order to get there, we need to start with a mood board. I put this together using this video's sponsor, Milanote. So Milanote is a web app that allows you to organize projects in a really visual way. It feels more like working on the wall of a creative studio with all your sticky notes. And for motion designers, it can be really useful to create beautiful mood boards, scripts, especially storyboarding, and even more, all in one place. So you get this ultimate bird's eye view of your project that is so useful when collaborating. And here I've collected some references for how I want this final project to look and feel. And the scene that we're designing is for a course that I'm preparing at the moment. And this scene is gonna be the focus of a lesson diving deep into character animation. So I definitely want the characters to be the focus. And great motion design doesn't spring fully formed from a designer's mind, certainly not my mind. Each project always starts with a mix of inspiration, references, and ideas. And then over a series of processes, we mix and refine those into designs and style frames, and then the final animation. And Milanote is the workspace for everything that happens before the first frame is animated. I used to always jump into animation way too soon, and then I'd run into issues that could have been avoided with a lot better planning. Say if your client isn't happy with a character in the style frame, it's a lot easier to change that character in one image than it is in two minutes of animation. One of the main visual references I'm using for this project is Forms in Nature by Chromosphere. Now this project came out around four years ago and it's still one of my favorite all time pieces of motion design. In particular, I love the use of depth of field, like in this shot having the objects in the distance out of focus and blurry. And then you've only got the focal object, which is really sharp. And then this image here is a big reference on how we can approach that for a character. And then down here, we've got some very basic sketches of how the scene could be structured. We've got one main character who will be in the center interacting with their phone. And then we've got a crowd of characters walking behind them. And then we'll have a city off in the distance as well. And once I was happy with this overall Overall composition, I took those thumbnails and moved into design. Now in Photoshop, I created these more refined sketches where I'm making as many design decisions as possible. So what do I mean by that? I mean that I'm deciding what exactly shape the head is. What do their eyes look like? Are they dots? Are they oval? Are they almonds? Are they circles? And I'm really kind of deciding what every shape and what every line is going to be. Now, obviously there's gonna be room for adjustment, but I find it really helpful only be focusing on one thing at a time. Earlier, I was focusing on the concept and composition. Now I'm focusing on the shape and form. I'm not thinking about color and effect at all at the moment. And I've also got two versions of our main character. So I can show what males and females both look like in this style. And then I've got a full body version of some background characters as well. And I've also designed this main one on a 1920 by 1920 artboard because this will be made into 16 by nine square and vertical format. So I need to make sure it will work in all of them. So once this has been decided, I take all of those sketches into Illustrator. I'm gonna put all of them on a very top layer, turn the transparency down to something like 20%, change the blending mode to multiply and lock that layer so I don't move it when I'm drawing. And then I start drawing shapes with the pen tool to create these characters. And I'm not really thinking about color yet. All I'm using is grayscale. So I can see how the values, the light and dark tones are gonna to interact with each other and then also decide what areas need contrast. But the actual color is gonna come next. Now we've got all of our shapes drawn. I've duplicated these background characters over here. I made a couple of slight adjustments to the faces so they don't all look exactly the same, but I'm probably gonna toy with those a bit more later. And now let's get into coloring, which is something that I definitely used to struggle with a lot. And I found this process really helped me. I've not seen it mentioned elsewhere. So this may be a Ben Marriott original, I doubt it. And there are some similar tools like the recoloring tools you can use in Illustrator as well. But here's how I do it. First, I'm just going to create a lot of squares at the top here. And then just start filling these with colors I think I'm going to use. I know I'm going to need a lot of blue tones. So let's get a variety of those up here. We'll need a few skin tones as well. And then a few more colors that I think will capture the mood that we had in our mood board earlier. But I'm not really being too precious and exact here at all because I'm gonna adjust all of these colors. Now I just select them all and then go over to our swatches panel and click the new color group, which will create from our selected artwork. And we want to make sure that we have ticked convert process to global. That is absolutely essential. Then we click okay. And then we've got them all lined up over here. And then let's go into our artwork and I'm gonna select an element that I want and just start swapping them out for these colors that we have here. So let's do the hair. 
Let's choose one of the darker flesh tones here. For the shadow, I don't have a darker flesh tone than that. But what I can do is take a shadow color and turn the transparency down to 50%. And then let's color this top. And even though these aren't looking too bad here, I can say the skin tone maybe isn't looking great how it's working with the hair here at the moment. So now what we can do and what I love doing, we can simply click on our swatch over here for our skin tone. We can click preview. Let's change this to HSB. And then we can make changes to the skin tone and it will affect all the layers colored with this. The ear, the face and the neck, which are all separate layers, are all being recolored. So maybe we want that a touch darker, maybe a little bit closer to the pink end of our spectrum over here. So it kind of fits in with this darker hair color as well. And I think this blue should be a little bit darker and less saturated. So we can double click on our dark blue swatch, click preview, and then just increase the blackness and decrease the saturation as well. And then we can continue selecting objects, coloring them, and just keep making adjustments as we need to. And here we are with all our objects colored in. I've added a few more colors that you can see in our swatches over here. And I've been slowly just tweaking the colors of each one so that together it starts to look balanced. It's still keeping the color palette within the limits. So I'm not allowing myself to have 16 versions of blue. And for me, this is the quickest way to bring the whole artwork to a place where the colors look balanced because I've had one pass just thinking about the values and then another pass adjusting the colors. Now you may not need to separate those two processes depending on the complexity of your shot and your familiarity with the subject matter. But for a scene, like this that's just a little more involved I like to break those down into more manageable chunks one pass for the shape and values and one for the color and this is our first style frame I've created a separate board in Milliner where I've collected my style frames so I can present them to the client if that wasn't me in this case and even though that I am client judge jury and animator it's still really helpful for me to be able to organize them and see an overview of our variations and it's important especially with a client to add notes and descriptions to your work so that you can help explain to them if you're not around to present it and they're bound to be coming back to it later and sharing it with their colleagues regardless. Milanote makes it easy to add descriptions, checklists, and lets everyone on the project add comments as well. Now I've got two variations of this style frame here, one with and one without the depth of field. And that's actually really easy to create in Illustrator. So let's hop back in there. Now I'm working on a few artboards. I've got this main one for our style frame, but I've also got this one with all our characters separated. And you can see they are all separated into different layers that I've labeled as well, because we always label our layers. And then I've just duplicated those over into this artboard and grouped them as well. So I'm not dealing with thousands of layers over here. And to add the depth of field, all we need to do is select one of our characters, go up to effects, blur, choose Gaussian blur, select the blur amount that we want. 15 seems good for this character here. And then do the same for all our other characters. And the closer this character is to our imaginary camera, I'm making her blurrier. I'm really further away from this focal character here, who's gonna be 100% sharp. The wall will be very slightly blurry. These background characters are a bit blurrier and the buildings and the clouds really blurry. And then we get this nice illusion of depth, which is really easy to do in After Effects as well, where we'll have each of these elements in their separate pre-comps. And we might even treat ourselves to some camera lens blur, even though it'll take longer to render. So let's add a note to our client mentioning that. So we've added the pros that it looks sophisticated, it looks nice, and a con, which is that it will add two hours to render time, let's assume. Now that way the client can assess that when choosing between these two options. So if they like how the depth of field looks, they have to accept that that's gonna take longer to render and that might impact the schedule. If they were wanting daily uploads, they might have to be okay with half resolution renders. And another con I probably won't say to the client is that we lose all the detail of our <laughs> of our city that I've drawn here. And I spent a while drawing that city. And bonus city drawing tip, whenever I drew cities, I always ended up with shapes that look like this, which just look boring and generic and just didn't have the depth that I wanted to. And this one obviously has more detail, but one thing that I included was a lot of diagonal shapes like these. So I've just drawn a trapezoid and then I'll duplicate that to make buildings in some cases, but even just to cut off the edge of these block shapes here, because that's how a square building like this one would cast a shadow over this one. And it just helps break up all these horizontal and vertical lines, which I think helps a lot. Now, I also can't stop myself from making variations of a style frame. So let's make a new board to show those off to the client. Let's call that color variants. Let's choose a pink color and change the custom icon to something like this. And maybe let's add an arrow as well. So they know they're variations of style frame number two. And in here we can choose a template. I'm gonna continue with an empty board and then I'm gonna get the variants and then just drag them in. Let's resize these and rearrange them so that they look a little nicer. And let's put a few labels on them. Now, I find it's really helpful to over-label things when talking to a client. Feedback can be a bit ambiguous, especially in email. And you will realize that things you thought were not ambiguous certainly are. So if a client gave feedback on speed and just used that word, you might not be sure if they meant the frame rate, the editing, the motion, the easing. So it's always great to over-communicate and clarify. So here it could be ambiguous to say they really like the sunset look which could be either one of these two frames really. So I always like to name them so they can just say, we love option 2C. And better yet, just get them to comment so it's clear to everyone. 
Now these variations are only made by changing two things. So I changed the color of the sky and the buildings. So they were darker if the sun's behind them over here. And then I added a bit of color correction to the whole image, really in both of these, just by drawing an orange or pink rectangle over the whole thing, turning down the transparency and setting its blending mode to soft light or opacity or something similar. And if you want to save any of these boards as a PDF, you can always go to export, choose PDF and let's choose highest quality. And in a couple of seconds, you've got that in PDF format. And here we have our final style frames for the scene cropped to each format. We started by collecting our references in one place. We sketched out the design. We drew the shapes in Illustrator. We colored it and added the effects in Illustrator too. And it's pretty similar to what we first dreamed about back in the early stages. Style frames are incredibly important for communicating and setting expectations with your client and anyone that you're collaborating with. And I'd say maybe equally important if you're working on your own personal projects. Now these, are ready for approval. And you know what? I say they are approved, ready for animation. And of course, big thank you to Milanote for sponsoring this one. You should definitely check it out. It is really useful. To discover the best ways to learn motion design, I've created a short playlist of videos that I think you'll enjoy if you've made it this far. Please like the video and consider subscribing if you'd like more of these videos every week. I'll see you in the next video.